everyone. Thanks for attending this afternoon's webinar. Um, today we will be speaking about the upcoming increase to superannuation minimum guarantee contribution and what you need to know to, to pre prepare your business to get ready for this increase. It's been a long time, long time coming. It's been sitting at 9.5% for quite some years. So this um, was very much in the making and very much overdue. So here it is. What will we be covering today? We will talk about the annual wage review. We'll talk about the minimum superannuation guarantee increase. We'll talk about what this means for you and whether you will be obligated to pass on this increase to your employees. So what I mean by that is we'll talk about whether your employees are employed on a base salary versus a total remuneration package. And then we'll also, also talk about immigration implications and, and how the increase to super also impacts upon some immigration practices that you may need to be aware of. So as you may be aware, the Fair Work Commission last week, I think it was on the 16th of June, determined a 2.5% um, increase will apply. So the Fair Work Commission noted that the Australian economy has recovered to a greater extent and more quickly than originally expected. And we were all, I guess, um, considering that the increase will be a lot less than 2.5%. But um, nevertheless, 2.5% is what the Fair Work Commission um, determined was, was appropriate in these instances. So these new rates will apply from the first full pay period um, after 1st July 2021. Even though it was a higher increase than what we were anticipating, the Fair Work Commission did take into account economic and social considerations um, of the pandemic of the pandemic and it, in, it considered things such as relevant industry specific data, the period of time between successive review, review increases and the likelihood that future lockdowns in the state will be of limited duration and localized, comprising of stay at home orders localized to a particular region with limited reasons for people to leave their home as compared to last year where it was much more widespread. So with that in consideration, it determined that the um, increase, the, genu uh, the, the generous increase of 2.5% would apply. But in saying that, it did take into consideration that we are still recovering and therefore it split the operative date of the minimum wage increase based on whether an industry remains based on research and submissions from interested parties affected by the pandemic. So you'll see on the screen that there's three operative dates being the 1st of July, the 1st of September and the 1st of November. Depending which modern award um, has been categorised as whether they continue to be affected um, negatively by the pandemic will determine whether you have been, the award has been classified in either group one, two or three. So superannuation is set to increase on the 1st of July as well. It's set to increase half a percent, which will bring the current 9.5% to 10%. So it, it comes into effect on the 1st of July this year, but where payment for wages is made in the July 21, 2021 quarter, even though it may be for work performed during a previous period, the 10% super guarantee contribution will still apply. The super is set to increase an additional half a percent every year until it reaches 12% in July of 2025. If a business does fail to pay the correct rate of the super guarantee into employees' super accounts, then they may be liable to pay the SGC, which is the superannuation guarantee charge. So the superannuation guarantee charge is an ATO penalty for late or inaccurate super payments and the charge is incorporated and includes the superannuation guarantee amount which is actually owed to the employees plus interest plus an administrative fee and that calculation is determined in accordance with the Superannuation Administration Act. Also, um, the maximum superannuation cap for the 2021-2022 financial year is also set to increase. 
So it's set to increase to $58,920 per quarter, which totals $235,680 per year. So if your employee earns a salary um, greater than $235,680 per year, then you will not be obligated to make super contributions to earnings above that amount. So base salary versus total remuneration package. So an employee is paid a base salary or paid a rate of pay. And, and, and this is where some or all additional entitlements such as statutory super is paid in addition to the base salary. So your typical clause will be something like your base salary is X amount, you know, $50,000 a year, for example, and it will say that this excludes super. It can include um, other allowances um, and penalties under an applicable modern award, but it will say that it excludes super. So where, it, where an employee is paid via these means, then you will be obligated to um, contribute the additional half percent to employees nominated superannuation fund. However, if an employee is paid a total remuneration package, this is where they are paid a total agreed sum, a total agreed salary, which is inclusive of both the base rate and superannuation. So in these instances, a company may elect to reduce an employee's base salary to offset the increase in super such that the total agreed remuneration remains unchanged. So you're decreasing an employee's take home pay by half a percent, but you're putting that half percent instead into the employee's nominated superannuation fund. So it's, it, it's the, the money is distributed differently, but under the total remuneration package, the total amount will remain unchanged. So a typical example is um, it will be set out in the contract as a TRP, total remuneration package, with a base salary of X and a superannuation of X totaling X. So where the minimum employer super contributions are required um, to be made by the company increase, the company may reduce your base salary by a corresponding amount so that the TRP remains the same. That is wording that will um, be, be included and incorporated into an employer's contract of employment if they're paid a total remuneration. So as I said before, um, the base salary um, take home pay will decrease, but the um, total remuneration remains unchanged. We need to be aware of some immigration implications based on the super changes. So um, this is really important for businesses who are sponsoring uh, primary subclass 482 visa holders. So as you would be aware, a 482 visa holder is a work visa which allows an Australian employer to sponsor a person from overseas to work in their business in Australia. So if there is a net reduction in the base salary, the guaranteed annual earnings of the sponsored employee, then you may be required to complete a new nomination and submit a new nomination form. Um, this will not be necessary where the primary sponsored visa holder has had intervening salary increases, which take them above the earnings nominated in the most recent, recent nomination, or where you decide and choose to absorb the cost of the additional super contribution so as not to decrease their base rate of pay. So by way of example, if your employee was nominated in a position with a base salary of $100,000 plus super, their total salary would be $110,000 from July of this, um, this year being the 10% uh, super increase and no reduction in guaranteed earnings. However, where your visa holder is paid under a total 
fixed remuneration package, which includes super, then their take home pay will be decreased. And this is what triggers the requirement to lodge another uh, new nomination um, form. So we just need to be very, very weary of that. If you're choosing to um, absorb and offset the payment under the TRP, Total Remuneration Package, you may need to fill out a new form. If not, then, and their base rate of pay will not be decreasing, then there's no need for a new nomination form. So this session was uh, very, very quick and brief, not too much to talk about um, in relation to the new super changes. So that's all the information that I had for this afternoon, but I'll now open it up to any questions that anyone may have. Anyone have any questions? I have one here. So apart from the minimum super contribution changes, are there any other legislative changes? Um, the answer is yes. So another change in relation to the super rules is that um, currently employees are um, asked to nominate their preferred super contribution fund. And if they don't nominate their preferred superannuation um, contribution fund, then the employer has the ability to automatically um, pay the super payments in their default fund. That's changing. So there is now a positive obligation on the employer in circumstances where an employee doesn't nominate their preferred fund to actually contact the ATO to determine whether an employee has an existing fund. In circumstances where an employee does have an existing super fund, then payments need to be made in that fund. It cannot default to the employer's um, super default super fund. It's only when an employee, and this is only going to be relevant for new employees, but it's only where an employee doesn't have an existing superannuation fund. This is the first time that they've been paid super um, and they don't nominate their preferred fund that a, that a business can um, then make payments directly into its default fund. So we've updated our contracts of employment on the cloud in that regard. We've changed some wording around the super clause to add in um, the, the, the um, I guess, the requirement for the business to assess whether an employee has an, an existing super fund first before it um, makes payments to its default fund. So those changes to the contracts will be made live um, before the 1st of July. I have another question. Do we need to notify employees about this and do you have a template letter for this? Um, so best practice um, would be to notify um, employees, it, it's not, um, I guess, a, a legal requirement as such, but you, 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 the, you first need to determine whether um, you will be absorbing the super increase under their total remuneration package um, or not. So in circumstances where an employee is paid a base rate plus super on top, there's no need for notification because your contracts of employment will be set up to say that we will make um, minimum super contributions in line with, with legislative requirements. So they will simply just be receiving an additional half percent in their super fund um, each quarter. Only where employees are paid a total remuneration package and you desire, you, you make the decision to absorb the increase um, within their package. So then the result being that their take home pay is half a percent less, then it would be a good idea to notify um, employees um, of, of that um, decision that the business has made. No, there's no template letter at the moment for this, but one will be made available um, before the 1st of July. I have another question here. Are the requirements for paying super changing, i.e. the $450 threshold? Um, really good question. 
I um, had heard uh, down the grapevine that that was changing, um, but the research that I've done so far, I haven't been able to find any changes in relation to that. Um, but I'll have another look and we will um, come back with an answer in relation to that. But I think that the answer is no, I haven't heard anything about that. Any other questions? Can't see any other questions coming through. So thank you very much everyone for your time this afternoon and I hope to um, talk to you all soon. Thank you so much.